Good morning. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Greetings on this, the Lord's day, and he has blessed us to be able to assemble ourselves here once again. We give him praise. Let's give God a big round of praise and thank him for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. We are so blessed this morning to have our daughter with us, Reverend Vicki Walker, the daughter of the late Clarence McKee and Ada McKee, and we are so grateful that she's with us on today. Let's hear now as she serves as our psalmist for the morning. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Sing Reverend Walker. No one else can do the things you do. Take the wrong in my life and make it right. Cause all I need, Lord, is a touch from you. Pray with the church. Sing Reverend Walker. Come on and sing. Touch from you. 
All I need is a touch from you. Thank you, Reverend Walker. For those of you that have your Bibles, I would ask that you turn with me to the book of Exodus. If you're in here with us this morning, if you would stand in honor of the reading of God's word, Exodus chapter 14, verse 10, and verse 10 only. This morning, I'm reading from the New International Version, Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Let me read that again. And Pharaoh, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. I want to talk from a subject this morning, facing what we see in front of us. I know the Egyptians were, were behind them, but you'll see where I'm going momentarily. Facing what we see in front of us. God, we thank you for this privilege to stand once again behind this sacred desk to proclaim your word with power and, dear God, with accuracy. Thank you for Reverend Walker reminding us that all we need is a touch from you. And sometimes the enemy wants to make us feel that we need something else or perhaps someone else. But the truth is, all we need is a touch from you. Send your word now. Send a fresh anointing that will destroy all yokes. It is in the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ, we pray. Amen. The word exodus, from which the book is named, describes the deliverance of the Hebrew children from bondage. It means a departure. Considering Exodus 14, it means a journey to escape. The Israelites, Reverend Singleton, had departed. They had been released. Pharaoh, after seeing the power of God manifested, uh, decided to let them go. In our text, if you've heard it before, they've successfully, successfully made it to the Red Sea. And I pray that you would rid yourself of your presuppositions and don't try to figure out where I'm going. Just hear the word of the Lord. The greatest challenge they had ever faced was now in front of them. And Pharaoh's army was quickly approaching them in the rear. My late mother, Corley Henry, would say they were stuck between a rock and a hard place. The Bible says they looked up and there were the Egyptians and they were terrified and cried out to the Lord. These four words continued to leap off the page. The Israelites looked up and what did they see? They saw the Egyptians coming after them from the rear and in the front they saw the Red Sea, a vast amount of water that they couldn't get around, they couldn't get over, they couldn't go under, all they could do was stand there, perplexed, bothered by what they saw in front of them. Can you imagine how they felt? Can I talk to some real folk this morning? I'm sure they felt hopeless and downcast. There was no conceivable way out. They were trapped, literally trapped. What are you facing? What are you facing this morning? What is it that's in front of you that makes you feel trapped and terrified? Someone listening this morning has been there, and someone else is there right now. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Circumstances and situations where there are not any solutions. Anybody ever been there? When you search for an answer, couldn't find an answer, and in spite of not being able to find an answer, you couldn't hear a word from the Lord. No way no possible way out. It has been said by the famous theologian Karl Barth, B-A-R-T-H, that every preacher needs to get up every morning with a newspaper in one hand and a Bible in the other one because he says we are challenged to confront the issues of the moment. Talk to me, somebody. We are not preaching if we are not dealing with the issues of the moment. 
What's going on? What's headline news as of today? What is it that the world is confronting with even as we speak? What we are going, what are we going to do with this pandemic that seems to be unrelenting, facing what we see in front of us? What can we say to the fact that in the beginning we were told that children are less likely to be affected? Yet just a few days ago, we learned of 200 campers uh, who contracted COVID-19 at the YMCA in Georgia, facing what we see in front of us. What about the seventh grader who died on Friday, just this past Friday, with no underlying conditions, facing what we see in front of us? Just a few days ago, our president tweeted, great job numbers, while unemployment claims have topped one million in the last 20 weeks facing what we see in front of us. What do you say to the parent who's reluctant about sending their own child back to school during COVID-19? A mother is, uh, 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 is part of her calling to look out for her children. What do you say with a mother whose heart is hurting, trying to make a decision? Do I do homeschool? Do I send my child to school? What do I do facing what we see in front of us. How do you handle the doctor's report when the doctor has called for a second scan? How do you deal with the injustices that we see in 2020? All of these things are things that are in front of us. And there's no need of trying to be in denial. There's no need of trying to escape it. Let's face it, we are dealing with these issues. These are all images of Red Seas that we are currently facing. What is your Red Sea this morning? These situations are in front of us, and we feel hopeless and trapped. I'm going to preach in a minute. There are many ideas, but no possible solutions. Everybody's trying to find a remedy, a vaccine, or something to solve this issue, and no one has come up with anything yet. Maybe God is saying, it's time for you to look to me. Maybe God is saying, I've got something better. That I wish I had somebody to help me. I am the only solution. You may very well remember the story of an 85-year-old Catholic woman who was trapped inside of a broken elevator some years ago. She spent four days, excuse me, four nights and three days inside of an elevator. She said, as CNN reported, she tried pushing the inside door. Listen, pushing but the electricity was off. She had her cell phone, but her cell phone could not receive a signal. Come on, somebody. Electricity was off. She couldn't push the door. Her cell phone didn't have a signal. Uh, are y'all with me? At first, she said to herself, this cannot be happening. But then she decided to turn the elevator into a personal prayer closet. She said, I will either panic or pray. Talk to me, somebody. Can I tell you, Reverend Heron, that when we are faced with life crises, we can either panic or pray. Talk to me, somebody. I know you'll never let somebody know you're panicking, but that somebody is praying, and someone is not praying. Someone is panicking. Someone is saying, Lord, things are out of control. Facing what we see in front of us. What did they do? The Bible says they were terrified. Look at the text. Bible says they were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Can I be honest and tell you from a human point of view, I would have been afraid also. They had every reason to be frightened. And I'm bothered sometimes, Jamie, by these individuals who always want to wave their hand and uh, you don't have anything to worry about. God is in charge. I'm too blessed to be stressed. All of that is true. But when the right storm hits, talk to me somebody, when your back is against the wall and you don't know which way to turn and you don't know what to do. The doctor can't f seem to find a solution to your illness facing what we see in front of us. They were caught between Pharaoh's army in their rear and what they saw in front of them, a vast amount of water. The Red Sea had them walled in, walled in to the left, walled in to the right, and they could not get around. My first point this morning, for those of you who are following me and taking notes, and I want you to get this because this is exactly the way Lord gave it, the Lord gave it to me. And these things are points that we're gleaning from the text. Listen, listen. Number one, he says, look beyond your natural eyes. Now, somebody's going to get upset during the explanation of this point, 
uh, because it may be the reason why there's confusion in your home. It may be the reason why there's confusion on your job because when you've got one person believing God and another person who's doubting, are, are y'all with me? That's why the Bible talks about being equally yoked. You need somebody who can see on the same plane, somebody that can see on the same level that you're seeing. And when you've got one person that is believing and another person who's doubting, it causes conflict. From the way things looked, they were trapped and there was no way out. Somebody ought to talk to me. Listen to the natural eye. They were doomed. Y'all didn't hear that. Uh, 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 listening to the natural eye. And I said listening. I didn't say looking. I said listening to the natural eye. They were doomed to be carnal minded. Uh, they were at the end of their rope. Paul raises the issue of carnality in Romans chapter 8. And I like it. Paul says that the flesh wars with the spirit. Anybody ever been there? If you set your mind on what you are going to do, you are dealing with your carnal mind. But if you can tell somebody, I know what I see. But I'm trusting God. Can I get a witness? You are placing your hope and faith in Jesus Christ. On the contrary, if you set your mind on what God can do, you can start giving God praise for what he's going to do. I know I'm just a few minutes into the sermon, but I dare you to give God praise for what he's going to do. Take your mind off of what you see. Take your mind off what you hear. And go ahead and give God praise. I wish you'd lift those holy hands and give God a high praise this morning. Let him know, God, I trust you. I trust you in spite of what I see. I trust you in spite of what I'm hearing. I trust you in spite of the noise that's coming to my ears. Nobody don't want to talk to me. I trust you. I trust you. It is, brothers and sisters, what Paul is trying to say. Paul said that the natural mind, are y'all with me? Or the carnal mind cannot please God. Talk to me. I, I, I'm going to burst somebody's bubble. Uh, you don't please God with your theological education. You don't please God with the degrees behind your name. You don't please God by coming in here on Sunday mornings. The Bible says that only way that you can please God is by exercising your faith. Faith over fear. I'm going to preach in a minute. Faith over fear, belief over doubt, courage uh, over discouragement, regardless of what you see this morning. I'm reminded of the song by the late James Cleveland, who said, I don't feel no waste time. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far. To lead me. Is there anyone here this morning can testify that I don't believe that God brought us to 2020 to leave us isolated and in this place that we're in. I don't believe, help me somebody, that he brought us this far to leave us now. Are y'all with me? Carnal minded people see their insurmountable red seas all over the place. Spiritually minded people see victory. Can I talk to somebody? And I tell you, if you want to get a praise party together, if you want to get a group of uh, folk who are praying with you and for you, you don't need folk who don't have faith enough to get to the ceiling. You need some prayer partners who believe that you're healed, even when the doctor says it don't look good. You need some prayer partners who believe that God will make a way, even when it seems like all doors are closed. You need some prayer partners who believe that God is bigger than COVID-19. The question is, what does the word, I didn't say the world, what does the word, I want you to get that. What does the word say about your situation? God is so awesome that he has a word. Oh, I feel this thing now that speaks to every situation, that speaks to every season in our lives. You got to find it and you got to. Apply it to your daily life. You got to let your spirit speak to your flesh. Pastor, why are you slowing down? I want you to get that. I want that to absorb in your spirit. You've got to allow your spirit to speak to your flesh. Has anybody ever witnessed that? In a moment that you were facing some peril, you realized that your, your flesh was weakened by what it saw, and all of a sudden God reminded you 
that I am God? Anybody here know he'll step right in? He has a ream of word for the moment. Are y'all with me? But they didn't do it. They, did, they, they said to Moses, were there no graves in Egypt that you've taken us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Listen, they spoke death to their own situation. Isn't that something? They saw themselves as defeated. And so they said, well, if we were going to die, why didn't you allow us to die in Egypt rather than dying in the wilderness? Get this now. I'm slowing down. I want you to see it. All they're faced with is a red sea that they can't cross. And now they've counted themselves out. And they have not considered God in the equation. I'm going to preach in a minute. What do you say? What are you doing this morning? Are you panicking? Are you praying? Or are you saying in your spirit, God, I trust you. God, I believe you. God, I believe we've got the victory. Talk to me, somebody. God, I believe that everything is going to be all right. Fear kicks in when we are trying to figure out how we can do it on our own. But God is trying to get us to admit, I surrender. I can't fix this. They saw the Red Sea, but they couldn't see God. The Red Sea was too much. Fear, brothers and sisters, is paralyzing. Woodrow, no, his last name is spelled, excuse me, crawl, last name is spelled K-R-O-L-L, said the only known antidote to fear is faith. Wow. The only known antidote to fear is faith. Are y'all with me? When Joshua succeeded Moses, God told him, do not fear. In the text, we hear Moses with a strong proclamation at the beginning of verse 13. What did he say? Fear not. Don't let fear rob God's glory for this moment. The message version, and uh, I thank Eugene Peterson for this, for giving us clarity. And verse 13 says, Moses spoke to the people and said, don't be afraid. This is what I like. He says, stand firm and watch God do his work. God knows I wish I had somebody to help me. Stand firm and watch God do his work. Now, I'm sure you're asking what made the Israelites cry out in fear in contrast to Moses saying, fear not. And Rem Caldwell, here's the answer. I want to argue this morning that it's all about perspective. And the older I get, the more I'm understanding that it's all about perspective. Two people can see the same thing. One person sees a struggle and another person sees victory. It's all about perspective. What do you mean, preacher? The Israelites saw the Red Sea. Moses saw God. Oh, I wish I had somebody to talk to me. The Israelites saw the Red Sea. Moses saw God. You do remember that God had promised them he was going with them. He didn't say he was going to watch from the rear. He says, I'm going with you. Fear not, Moses, I am going with you. I want to tell somebody this morning, the Lord is not standing back to see how you're going to handle this, but rather he's waiting on you to relinquish your will to his will and declare, God, I believe that you're going to see us through this. Can I tell you what the Bible does not say? Go through it. Genesis all the way to Revelation. And you won't find these words. God never tells us to worry about it. He never tells us to stress out over it. He never tells us to try to figure it out on our own. But he, what he does say is, trust me. Talk to me, somebody. Trust me. Trust me when you can't trace me. Trust me when you don't understand me. Trust me when what you see in front of you seems insurmountable. Worrying about what is in front of you is not going to fix it. Talked about that a few weeks ago. Wearing is not going to fix it. And then he said in verse 14, I wish I had somebody to talk to me. Verse 14, he says, the Lord will fight for you. That's it. Rem Brown, that one statement should be sufficient for all of us. It should have been sufficient for them. The Lord will fight for you. Talk to me, somebody. I said the, uh, uh, my, my second point. First thing is I said, look beyond your natural eyes. My second point is look for the move of God. Can I tell somebody God is moving? Even on this morning.
but you can't see it if you're not looking out of your spiritual eyes. God is always up to something. He's always working something out. I know y'all are saying, where is the move of God in the text? In verse 19, God blows their mind. The Bible says, then the angel of the Lord who had been traveling in front of them withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud moved from the front and stood in the back. Now, uh, somebody in here ought to say amen. If you knew what God was doing, what God was doing is he was positioning himself between the Israelites, talk to me somebody, and the Egyptians. What God was saying is if you want to get to them, you've got to come through me. I wish I had somebody. Is there anybody in the house know this morning that God repositions himself? Gets into our situation. Moves in our situation. God repositioned himself. Moved from the front where he was leading them to the back so that he could protect them. How reassuring that must have been. It means, brothers and sisters, that we've got to notice the move of God. Talk to me, somebody. I want to throw in a real life slice of life here this morning so somebody could get it. And I think some of you may have missed this just the other day. I want to testify for a moment. And as I listened to the news of the hurricane approaching just a few days ago, my biggest concern was not the wind or the rain. I've been through hurricanes before. My biggest concern, Reverend Evans, this time was, Lord, what are we going to do? If people have to be displaced and placed in shelters and the end result would be a potential widespread of COVID-19. I don't know whether you watched the news, but not one shelter had to open in New Hanover County. And why I believe that God got in between the hurricane and stood in between us and, our, and intervened on our behalf. Is there anybody here this morning believe in divine intervention? I want to see the hands of somebody who knows that God will step in, show himself mighty. And I know I, I, I read posts on Facebook where folk were upset because they were without electricity. Our electricity went off at midnight and stayed off to 4 o'clock the next day. But I tell you what it did not do. It did not stop my praise. Can I get a witness? God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Can I get somebody to talk to me? God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I can praise him when I'm sweating. I can praise him when I'm hungry. I can praise him when I'm tired. Because God is good. God moved to the rear of the crowd. See, I want you to see the move of God. Sometimes we can be so focused on what God is not doing. Talk to me, somebody that we miss the move of God. God moves in small ways, moving big things. Talk to me, somebody. God is moving. God served as a buffer, I'm going to preach in a minute, between the Israelites and the Egyptians. God parted uh, the Red Sea so that they could cross over on dry land. God caused the wind to blow all night long. God caused the Egyptians' wheels to be stuck in the sand. God did it. Preacher, what are you doing? I'm trying to get you to see what God was doing. And this morning, I'm trying to get you to see what God is doing. Then in the midst of everything of what God was doing, verse 25, Reverend Heron, gives us the testimony. It's a strange testimony because it's a testimony coming from the Egyptians. What a mighty God we serve who can make your enemies testify to his goodness. In verse 25, the, is, uh, the Egyptians say, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them. Talk to me somebody. Isn't that awesome? Somebody ought to start right here and give God a praise. Forgive God a praise for what your enemy can see him doing. Those who counted you out can see God's favor. Those who thought you'd be hungry by now can see God's favor. Those who thought you were not going to survive can see God's favor. Those who said you will not make it can see God's favor in your life. They said, let us leave the Egyptians. 
for the Lord is fighting for them while working on our behalf, while working on our behalf. And what did Moses say? Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, I don't want you to under misunderstand that because we misinterpret that verse, that statement, stand still. He was not telling them to stand and don't move. What he was saying is watch the move of God because while they were moving, God was working. They were headed in the right direction. They were crossing the sea of what they thought was impossible. Look beyond your natural eyes. Look for the move of God. Talk to me, somebody. I asked God to close the sermon this morning. And the Lord said to me, take them on a journey and let them see that I set it all up. Before they left Egypt, God demonstrated his power by allowing them to see how God triumphed over Pharaoh by sparing their lives during the ten plagues. And each plague, God showed Pharaoh that I am God. Can I get a witness? Following the ten plagues, God led them out of Egypt as he had promised, as he had said. Before they left Egypt, God showed them favor from the Egyptians and allowed them to collect a spoil. So they left Egypt as millionaires. God did not lead them the way of the Philistines because he knew they couldn't fight. Rather, he led them intentionally the way of the Red Sea. God knows what he's doing. God knew what he was doing then and he knows what he's doing now. All along their journey, they witnessed the power of God again and again. Has anyone here this morning can tell your neighbor, I've seen him work. I've seen him work. When my back was against the wall, I've seen him work. When I was down to my last dime, I've seen him work. When I didn't have any resources, I've seen him work. When the doctor said one thing and God said something else, I've seen him work. When my children were not doing what they're supposed to do, I've seen them work. When the battle is bigger than we are, God shows himself mighty. I asked the Lord then, okay, clearly, what is the last point? We talked about looking beyond natural eyes, looking for the move of God, and God said, it sort of resembles last week, but here it is again. God says, I'm taking your faith to a new level. Y'all didn't get that. Can I talk to some real folk and make some folk upset? God has really shown us something since March. He's shown us that we don't need four walls to have church. Y'all don't hear me? God is teaching us how to have church when there's just two or three gathered together in his knee. God is teaching us what you thought you needed is not necessary. What's essential in this season is a personal relationship with God. I wish I had somebody to talk to me. God is teaching us. You don't have to have a large funeral to send somebody home. To be absent from the body is to be present with God. What matters is, is the person saved or not. God is taking our faith to a new level. God is helping us understand the importance of having a relationship with him. It does not matter this morning whether you are Baptist, AME Zion, AME, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, uh, uh, the, the, the Church of the Latter-day Saints. None of that really matters. What matters in this storm is that you know who God is and you know he's able. I wish I had somebody to help me to handle what's in front of you. Can I get a witness? I was sitting in my office trying to reflect on God's goodness. And God said, I want to take you, Terry, down memory lane. He said, go back to Grandma's house. Grandma Marley sitting on the front porch. I remember Grandma Marley telling us about Hoover days. Talk to me, somebody. The perils of picking cotton, working for a little or nothing. She talked about tough economic times. But Genevieve, at the end, she said, we made it. My mom was 29 years old on October the 15th, 1954, when Hazel struck this area. Mama told me, said, Terry, it sounded like a freight train was coming down the highway. 
lives were lost, houses was flattened, uh, places were demolished. But she said, we made it. Can I get somebody to help me? Here I am, a third generation later. I've been through Andrew. I've been through Katrina. I've been through one hurricane after another. And because I'm standing here, I am a testimony that the Lord brought us through. Our children will never forget Florence. Talk to me, somebody. Our grandchildren are living through COVID-19. I guess y'all are saying, what in the world are you trying to say? Every generation has its own set of problems, its own set of issues. But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned he's able to fight my battles. I've learned he's able to move my mountain. He's able to show himself mighty. God asked me the other day, he said, have you started preparing for your post-COVID-19 praise, your post-COVID-19 worship? Oh, I didn't see many hands in here now. Can I get somebody to help me? When you start preparing for your post-COVID-19 worship, that means you believe in God. That soon and very soon, he's going to turn this thing around. Can I get somebody to help me? And you will discover that you don't need a church, an assembly of worship to give God praise. But will you stand up in the house that God allows you to live in and proclaim God is, God is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in time of trouble. I wish I had about 10 folk that I give God praise. Praise him for what he's doing in the kingdom. Praise him for what he's doing that I can't see. Praise him for what he's already done. He brought us a mighty long way. And he has promised no, never alone. He has promised no, Never alone. I've seen the lightning flash. He's promised. No, never alone. As we stand all over the place, what are you facing in front of you? What are you trying to figure out with your natural senses? Are you able to recognize the move of God? The little things, the doors he's already opened. And I've learned to thank him for the doors he's shut. Wow. Seeing. Grandma Molly persevered. They made it. And she made it when Granddaddy Hayward died in West Virginia and she had to raise all the children by herself. But she made it. She made it through difficult times, hard work. She made it. Mama said, Terry, Hazel sounded like a freight train coming down the highway. But we made it. I can tell my children we made it. My grandgirls, grandboys will be able to tell their children, Lord willing, we lived through COVID-19. We didn't understand it, but we made it. Can I get some folk to just raise your hand and thank God that you made it? Through the storm, through the rain, through the sunshine, and through the pain. You made it. You made it. You made it. You made it. 
Would you pray with me? And for anyone listening that is unsaved, it is my prayer that you would make Jesus your choice today. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that God has raised him, him being Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can be saved today in the midst of this pandemic. God, we honor you, we bless you, we thank you for showing us a clip of what we're going through in a text that's over 2,000 years old, showing us that as we face our Red Seas, we can face them with courage. We can face them with faith. We can face them believing that you are working, doing something in the heavens that's being manifested on the earth, doing something behind the scenes that's not always visible to the naked eye, but those of us who walk by faith and not by sight can see it. We can see it clearly. God, in just a moment, Vicki is coming back, Reverend Walker rather, reminding us that we are never alone. So whether we are sitting in our living room, in our bedroom, or wherever we find ourselves, I give you praise that we are never alone. You promised never to leave us, nor would you forsake us. So we are standing on your word, standing on your promises. Bless us. Keep us. And God, I heard you say in the spirit, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Just now, rather than looking forward or looking behind us, help us to look up, upward to you. David said, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. For my help, my help, my help, my help comes from the Lord. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your holy name. You're worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea. You're worthy to be praised. Rev. Walker is coming now, reminding us that we are never alone. Sing it, Rev. Walker. Sing it. Yes, sir. Come on, church. If that's your testimony, praise him with you. Trying to conquer my soul. to conquer my soul. Come on, church, and pray with us. The voice of my Savior, he was telling me, shall fight on. That's it. That's it. Tell us what he said. He promised. 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 Never promised. To leave promised. Me. Yes, sir. Never to leave me alone. Henson. My God promised. I said he promised. Never to leave. I said he promised. Me. I said he promised. Never to leave me alone. No, no. Never alone. Oh yes.
Come on and sing it. Come on and sing it. Take us there. Take us there. I've heard the thunder roll. I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt sin's breakers dashing. Trying to conquer my soul. They were trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus. But I heard yes, sir. the voice of my Savior. He oh, yeah. Still fight on. Fight on. My God promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Oh no, never recognize that we can hear the sound of the thunder we can see the lightning flashing but we also hear the voice of our Savior bidding us still fight on let me thank God for each of you I want to thank God this morning for this team that has made ministry happen since March of this year I want to certainly thank God for Jamie our music ministry our ushers, and those fellows who come every Sunday morning to make sure everything is in place. Our ministers as well. We are a team. Avery, I was mentioning the media ministry. We thank God for all of you for making things happen. You got a choice. We're facing things that we see. You can either have fear or you can panic. I choose to trust God. On behalf of our First Lady, we certainly thank you. On behalf of our deacons, our deaconess, our ministers, and all of our team leaders and our entire church family. And we will come together again. We will come together again. COVID-19 is going to pass. Y'all didn't get it. It had a date that it entered. And it also has a date it's going to leave. And God knows the date. And I want you to have your post COVID-19 praise already. In fact, you don't have to wait until it happens. You can praise him now. Bless him now. But make sure that you are ready to give God the glory for the great things he has done. As we stand all over the place, God, we bless you and we thank you for how you use the Reverend Vicki Walker on today, reminding us through two songs that we can depend on you. God, as we leave this place, we realize we are never leaving your presence. We realize that you promise never to leave us, never to leave us alone. Bless us, keep us, continue to empower us with your word. It is in the strong name of Jesus we pray. Can we do together the threefold amen? 